Hey everybody, this is Darren Van Dam, and you are watching Flick Connection, the show that usually helps you get more out of movies, but today I'm going to be telling you about all the streaming services, what they cost, what they feature, and which ones are the best ones to have, and the best ways to bundle them to save you the most money. All these details are going to be in the description below, and a lot of this information is subject to change, but these are the prices as they stand right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through each streaming service, talk about the benefits of each, what they cost, is it worth the money. I'm also going to be including some premium channels like Cinemax and Showtime, as well as some free streaming services like Tubi. That way by the end of this video, you maybe either figure out how to save some money or how to spend a little bit more money on some additional streaming services. So let's go ahead and start with the big one and get it out of the way, Netflix. So Netflix is a must have in my opinion. It is weighed down with a lot of junk, but they have a lot of shows that are what you would call, or what you used to call, water cooler shows. Those are the shows that people are always talking about. They have the most buzz. They're the shows if you don't watch, you're gonna be left out of conversations in social situations, which are not really a thing anymore, but they will likely come back sometime soon. And I think Netflix has more of those shows than anybody else. They're not all top quality, but they always have something in rotation that's on that there's a lot of buzz about that people are talking about. And occasionally they have original movies that I really want to see. For instance, one of my favorite directors, David Fincher, his latest movie starring Gary Oldman just released as a Netflix original. It's the only way I would have been able to see this movie. It was in local theaters, but then I'd have to go down and spend about 12 bucks for a COVID laden seat. And I'd much rather watch it on Netflix at home. And they always have some great indie movies, lesser known movies. In fact, if you're new here and you just found this channel, that is the bulk of my content is recommending lesser known movies that you can find on Netflix and other platforms. And in my experience, Netflix has the greatest depth of decent movies worth watching. That said, let's move on to Prime Video. So for 119 bucks annually or $12.99 a month, you can get a Prime Video account. Now there's a lot more that comes with it, which I'll touch on in just a second, but that's less than the cost of Netflix, and it still gets you access to a bunch of really good shows. While I think Prime Video doesn't have as many good quality shows as Netflix, the ones that they do have are quite good and well worth watching. If you have a Prime account and you have not been taking advantage of Prime Video, you're missing out on shows like Jack Ryan and The Marvelous Miss Maisel, good quality shows, as well as some great movies. Amazon Studios produces really great movies and they come to Amazon first before you're gonna find them on any platform. And amid the COVID pandemic, they released what I think is one of the best movies of 2020, Sound of Metal. That was an Amazon Studios project, supposed to come out in theaters, but it released right there on Prime Video. Now, while I do like Prime Video and I often find myself defaulting to it more so than Netflix, it is a little bit hard to find things. Their user interface is not very friendly in my opinion because they have so much paid content mixed in with the free content. It can be a little bit confusing. But once you get used to it and you maybe fill up your queue, maybe with some movies that I recommend in some of my other videos, you will be able to get a lot out of that service. And not only is it cheaper than Netflix, if you take advantage of a Prime membership, meaning you're saving money on shipping, you can actually make a Prime account pay for itself. Just for example, buying toilet paper, paper towels, things of that nature through Amazon with the free shipping you get with Prime can often save you a lot versus what you're used to paying on standard things like that at the grocery store. So with just a little bit of planning, that $120 annual fee can more than pay for itself with a Prime account, and then you've got this streaming service basically for free. So I personally like Hulu, but honestly, there will be months that pass that I never even access it because their offering is somewhat limited. Now when you log in, there seems to be a lot of stuff there, but it is weighed down with what I consider to be a lot of junk. But Hulu can be great for watching some network television. They tend to get added maybe the night of or the day after things air, sometimes a few days after. But some of those shows can appear on other platforms. For instance, if you find you only use Hulu to watch, I don't know, something like South Park, it's available with HBO Max and you may be wasting money by having Hulu. Yeah! There are good movies on Hulu, 
but not nearly as many as there are on Prime and Netflix. And a lot of the movies available on Hulu are also available on Prime Video at the exact same time. And while they are cheap, they do have ads, unless you wanna pay even more to get no ads, but then you're paying as much as some of the other platforms, and there's not as much to offer here. So it gets a little bit sketchy there with Hulu. Again, I do like it, it's just not my favorite of the major ones. Now the new kid on the block, HBO Max, is the most expensive at $14.99, but HBO has been charging fees like that for a long time for their content, and they make quality shows. Obviously shows like Game of Thrones and Sopranos, you have access to all of that, with HBO Max, but you have access to other stuff. They added Friends, if you feel like you need to keep watching that show. Mexico! <laughs> as well as a bunch of stuff from Cartoon Network, Turner Classic Movies. So they've got a real wide spread of movies from multiple platforms, not just HBO. But in addition to all of that, Warner Brothers, the parent company, is releasing all of their major releases for 2021 on HBO Max. The first one to hit was at Christmas, that was Wonder Woman. There's a new Denzel Washington movie that looks really fantastic that's about to release just days after me creating this video. And then there's gonna be movies like Dune that come out later in the year directly on HBO Max. Personally, with the variety and the amount of movies that they offer in comparison to Netflix and Prime, I find HBO Max to be well worth the fee that they're charging. Now, it's been over a year since Disney Plus released, and I consider this to be a must-have if you have kids because they have so much to choose from. The only problem is a lot of the good stuff can be hard to find. So if you've developed tremors from hearing Let It Go too many times, Let it go! Let it go! or you have a small aneurysm every time that sun rises from The Lion King, There's a ton of other stuff you could be watching with your kids, including some classic Mickey cartoons, a bunch of shorts produced and sponsored by Pixar, as well as some really fantastic little hidden gem shows like Bluey. My kids are five and almost three years old and they love Bluey. It's a great little family-friendly show from Australia that's squeaky clean but fun to watch with the kids. And there's more stuff, there's a lot there. It just doesn't all rise to the surface, so you do have to dig with Disney+. Plus. And I have to mention The Mandalorian. It's one of the hottest shows going right now. I feel like it's hotter than anything on Netflix. Everyone's talking about it. I do think it's a well done show. If you're into it at all and want to be part of it, you have to have Disney Plus. It looks like they're going to be going in that direction as well. They're producing a lot more shows within the Marvel Universe and everything like that that are going to be considered must watches. So if you're into the properties that Disney owns, which is like half of entertainment right now, that's another reason to get Disney Plus. And their pricing is more than reasonable considering how much you get for it. Now ESPN Plus is cheap, but it's also not going to include a bunch of live sports. They're more known for some of their original programming, and while they do get some big games at times, if you're going to follow a particular sport or a particular team through the season, this is not going to be the way to do that. This is going to be a way to access some major sporting events and also access some of their hit programming like Sports Center if that's something you're already somewhat addicted to. Now ESPN Plus does come up in one of the bundles that I'm gonna be talking about in just a couple of minutes, but if you're not an ESPN fan, I don't really see a reason why you would wanna get ESPN Plus. Now, Apple TV Plus is one that I have personally not used, and they are about to either flop or they're gonna be raising their price. Right now they've got an extremely reasonable price, but they don't have a lot of programming. They picked up Greyhound with Tom Hanks, which you have to have Apple TV Plus if you wanna watch that movie, and they're about to have a Tom Holland crime movie called Cherry that looks very good as well, but some of their original programming is very intriguing. Ted Lasso is supposed to be incredibly funny. I always figured that tea was just gonna taste like hot brown water. And you know what? I was right. Yeah, it's horrible. No, thank you. Welcome to England. And the show C with Jason Momoa is also supposed to be pretty incredible. So well worth checking out for the low rate, but they're either gonna need to start doing better or they're gonna go by the wayside. So I wouldn't invest too heavily in having that Apple TV account just yet. 
Okay, one more premium service and then I'm gonna talk about some of the movie services like Showtime. But Shudder is actually a property of AMC and it is a must have for horror movie fans. If you love horror, you can't get enough of it, there's not enough to choose from on the other platforms we've talked about so far, you gotta get Shudder. That's all they have. They say it's horror and thrillers. There's a few thrillers that you would not call horror movies. This is a horror movie streaming service. That's all it is. But it's got great stuff on there, including some originals like Mandy, which I absolutely love, and Revenge. That's another great Shudder original. And then they've got some good shows like the Creep Show series. Blood Machines is a super trippy, weird thing. And then I personally love The Last Drive-In with Joe Bob Briggs. As a movie nerd, I love watching that show. So it just justifies the $6 a month subscription for me, but if that's not for you, I wouldn't bother with Shudder because again, that's all that it is. I will also say with Shudder and some of the other premium networks I'm about to mention, you can include them with Prime Video, some of them even with Hulu, just as an add-on. The price is not different at all. It's a little easier to access because you don't have to have all the different apps. You just jump into Prime Video and your stuff is right there at the top to choose from. However, things like Shudder, while you pay the full price, you don't get access to 100% of the content available on Shutter. So be aware of that before you start bundling things with your Prime Video account. Now, even though I pay for a subscription, Cinemax is low on the totem pole for me. If I was gonna cut anything, it would be Cinemax. However, it is the premium movie channel to go for if you love action. It's loaded with good action movies, crappy action movies, and a handful of original series that are all action oriented and they are quite good. But if you're not really an action movie person, Cinemax has not really got too much for you. Moving on to Showtime, they're a longtime competitor of HBO, and while not quite as good, they do have a good selection of movies always in rotation, and then they've got some really fantastic shows like Ray Donovan, Shameless, and Billions, all popular shows, really well done, but if you're not already into them, my honest opinion is that there's plenty of other stuff to choose from on all the other platforms. In fact, there's too much. There's more than you could ever possibly watch on the other platforms to really justify getting one of these accounts unless you're just really interested in one or two of the shows that they have. And then Stars is under $10. It's the most reasonably priced one and I think it has just as much to offer. There's plenty of movies. In fact, they often have a decent selection of family movies. That's a little bit less the case now that Disney Plus is in the picture, but they also have some good original shows. Shows like American Gods, Power, and Outlander, all hit shows that are well worth paying the subscription if you're into them, but you may not want to go ahead and get addicted to any of those shows if you don't want the added expense but Stars is up there. Stars is one that I would hang on to for the price. Now something to keep in mind is that all the movies available on networks like Showtime, Stars, and Cinemax, they rotate out and end up on Netflix and Prime Video eventually, or at least most of them do. So it's not really worth getting those just to get access to the movies that's on them because they won't be on there forever, at least in most cases. But if you're like me and you just want access to more stuff at any given time, it is worth picking up at least a couple of those premium networks. Now before talking about some of the free platforms like Tubi, there are two prevailing live TV options. You've got YouTube TV and Hulu with live TV. With Hulu live TV, you get a basic Hulu account, but you also get access to live TV. Very much like a DVR or a cable setup with a bunch of channels, but for the same price, you get a few more channels with YouTube and you get unlimited DVR storage with YouTube TV, making it the better deal. The only real difference and reason to go with Hulu is if you've already got Hulu that you're paying for and or you want to pay five extra bucks a month bringing you up to 70 bucks to get ads free. Not quite sure that's worth the extra money because you're not going to have zero ads on live television, only on recorded stuff. Even that is probably not the case 100% of the time. Now Tubi is my favorite free platform. They've got a great selection of movies that I like and like to recommend right here on the channel. But I also find that of all the free networks, their ad breaks to be the most reasonable. They're spread out, 
they don't interrupt the movie too much, and they're very short. Now, they're a little grating because they're repetitive. You typically will see the same ad throughout the movie, but again, you're not being interrupted nearly as much as you are with some of the other networks, and it's totally free. Whatever device you use, odds are Tubi is available, and you can start watching stuff on it right away, and there are no hidden fees whatsoever. Peacock is relatively new and they have a decent amount of shows and movies just like Tubi. In fact, I think they have a rather good selection. I do find their ad breaks to be a little bit more of a bother to me. They're longer, they're a little more aggressive, but not terrible. So I will occasionally watch something on Peacock, but man, I've got to be really starved for something to watch on all the other networks to really go with Peacock. Peacock does have a paid service, which honestly, I don't know why you would pay for that. Again, when there's so much to choose from, if you really feel like you need the stuff that they're putting behind the paywall, then maybe you just need to get live TV with one of the other options. Crackle falls in a similar category. They have some interesting original stuff, but nothing too exciting, but they also run ads and they're okay. They're not as good as Tubi, but they're also not as bad and abusive as some of the other networks. One that I just don't even want to include on this video is IMDb TV. They often have good movies, but they want to hit you with ads every 10 minutes, sometimes more often than that, and I'm just not having it. It's 2021, we can pay for stuff and not have to have a ton of ads, and I just don't need it in my life. And I'll put Pluto TV in the same category. I mean, this video would last forever if I talked about every single one, but those are all the top of the heap. Now, here are a couple of bundles that I highly recommend taking advantage of. And as far as I'm concerned, all these networks like CBS All Access and Fox Now can go s a because we don't need to keep paying for this content. It's available on other platforms. It's available on Hulu. Why the f would we pay extra money for it? The content that they're creating on these things doesn't even look that enticing compared to what else is available. What do you think of that, CBS All Access? My personal streaming makeup includes Netflix, Prime Video, HBO Max, Hulu, Disney Plus, Shudder, Stars, and Cinemax for right at $70 a month. I think that's a pretty good deal. It's about a third of what the average cable bill is today. I feel like if you're still paying for cable, you should take a good hard look at this. Because again, I got access to way more movies and shows than I could possibly ever dream about watching for 70 bucks a month, which doesn't sound like a small chunk of change, but it's about $140 less than the average cable bill, which I believe is over $1,600 a year that you could save and still get access to all the premium networks. Another quick tip before I sign off is that these platforms, they charge monthly fees. You're not handcuffed like you are with satellite and cable packages. So if you're a little tight for money, but you want to watch Outlander on Showtime, get Showtime for a month or two, cancel it and get another service. Hop around a little bit. It's fine to do that. It's not really rigging the system. They charge by the month, which allows you to switch on a month to month basis. Again, hope all the tips are helpful. If you found this video helpful, just give it a like. It's super quick and easy to do, but I will be back soon with plenty of movie reviews and recommendations, the stuff that all my subscribers signed up for. I've been wanting to do a video like this one for a while, but I will keep making my regularly scheduled videos as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for watching this special episode and you will see me on the next one.